After two major defeats and a dead emperor, Emilianus was the general that restored Roman supremacy over the Goths, and as a result, was proclaimed emperor by his troops. Hello everyone and welcome to the SPQR Historian. On this channel we cover Roman history and we try to present the past as it was, to the best of our ability and the available evidence. If that sounds good, please consider clicking the subscribe button at the bottom right of your screen. Introduction Marcus Aemilius Aemilianus was born circa 210. The anonymous late 4th century Epitome de Caesaribus sets the birthplace of Aemilianus on the Isle of Gerber, just off the coast of western Tunisia. He seems to have belonged to an insignificant family, a family that likely got its Roman citizenship during the late Republic when his homeland was ruled by Aemilius Lepidus. It was common practice to assume the name of the man from whom you received your citizenship. Marcus Aemilius Aemilianus reinforces this connection to Lepidus. Virtually nothing is known of his early career, but during the reign of Trebonius Gallus, he was made governor of the Magian provinces on the Danube frontier, replacing the emperor himself. Gallus had secured the throne after the death of Decius at the hands of the Goths, and had been forced to sign a humiliating treaty for Rome. Putting Emilianus in charge of the Mosian provinces suggested that Gallus trusted him to some extent, a trust that was evidently misplaced. Once established in his new province, Emilianus refused to pay the full amount that was owed to the Goths, according to the treaty Gallus had established following the defeat at the Battle of Abritus. All the Goths demanded more payments than was agreed upon in an effort to extort more of Moesia's wealth. Either way, Emilianus promised his soldiers that they would receive all that had been given to the Goths if they would engage in war with the barbarians. After gaining the support of his troops, Emilianus was able to catch the Goths by surprise and defeat them, and invaded their territory, reclaiming much of the booty given to the Goths. The importance of this victory can be debated, but it meant a lot to Roman morale. Rome had suffered greatly at the hands of the Goths in recent years, even losing an emperor in battle. Afterwards, the soldiers proclaimed Emilianus emperor of Rome. He quickly assembled an army in Moesia, weakening the defences of the province, and marched on Rome to press his imperial claim, and remove Trebonius Gallus from the throne. War in Italy Emilianus arrived in Italy way before anyone expected, his arrival shocking the ill-prepared emperor. Gallus had sent word to Publius Licinius Valerianus, who commanded forces on the Rhine frontier, that he needed reinforcements. But because of Emilianus's forced march, he had arrived well before Valerianus's legions had a chance to arrive in Italy. Before Gallus and Emilianus could engage in battle, Gallus's soldiers killed him and defected to Emilianus. Interestingly, Emilianus wrote to the Senate in Rome that he would rid Thrace of barbarians, that he would campaign against Persia, and that having turned the realm over to the Senate, he would do everything and fight as their general suggesting a division of the state where the senate would be in charge of the civic government and he would be in charge of military matters. As Aemilianus's reign would prove to be extremely short, we never got a chance to see what such a division would bring to the empire. Valerianus, who was already amassing his forces, was poised to enter Italy and reinforce Gallus. When he learned of Gallus's death, he proclaimed himself emperor and marched towards Aemilianus. The soldiers apparently consider Emilianus weaker with respect to the war, and Valerianus was a better leader for the affairs of state and promptly had him killed before a battle could be fought. Emilianus ruled between June and September of 253. Final thoughts Emilianus proved to be the quintessential 3rd century emperor. He was able to defeat the Goths, restoring some Roman pride, and as any successful general in the 3rd century, he was promptly proclaimed emperor, taking parts of the frontier forces away from the frontier, leaving the empire weakened and getting killed by his own soldiers when they thought that Valerianus had the upper hand. His division of civic and military matters is interesting, but since nothing came of it, it remains just a curiosity. 
Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we make here on the channel. It really helps us grow and reach more people. The next video in this series will be on Valerianus.